What's up, everybody? My name is Lehua, and welcome to the Superfina channel. I am a Hawaii variety content creator, host of podcasts across worlds, and I stream on twitch.tv slash Lehua Superfina. Today, we are reviewing that time I got reincarnated as a slime. If you like anime reviews, don't forget to subscribe, ring the bell so you can be notified on the next upload. And if you would like to support the channel, we've got Patreon and channel membership. Link to those are below. We are reviewing that time I got reincarnated as a slime season 2, episode 16. And we finally got Ramirez's warning. We had like the warning two episodes ago, or the last episode. <laughs> it's a, uh, um, it took a while. And I say two episodes ago because she arrived at the end, and the next episode was titled Ramirez's warning. And this episode, we finally got it. And it was basically saying that Clayman is after. Tempest, Juro Tempest Federation, and it looked like Rimmer is like, yeah, and what? <laughs> Ramirez then explains about what Purgus, and I feel like this episode fully explained what World Purgus is because when we saw it being mentioned with Clayman and Kazarim, Yuki, them, it wasn't fully explained. Like we got parts of it, but this was a better explanation. And basically, Walpurgis is when the demon lords uh, get together and they talk. That's it. I was thinking, or what, I was getting the impression that it was when they were going to vote and make decisions. And yes, that is what a meeting does, but it just sounds like they have some powwow. Be like, hey, what are you guys doing in your territory? Oh, we're doing this, yeah. Oh, are you trying to like go into our territory? Are you trying to take stuff from our area? Huh? Like, that's what it sounds like to me from Ramirez's explanation. And Ramirez fully explains that Clayman is going to go against Rimuru or is trying to plan to get all the demon lords to view Rimuru as a bad guy, saying that Rimuru is declaring he's a demon lord and he's in cahoots with Lord Carrion and basically giving. Claiming a reason for attacking Rimuru. That's what it sounds like because they are using Yulon and Claiming is saying that Rimuru killed Yulon and that's going to be his reason for attacking, etc. 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 There's just so many things that Claiming is going to use to support himself, but the biggest thing that's going to go against him is Yulon because she's still alive and when Ramirez was talking to Rimuru about this, she totally thought that what Clayman said was legit. But she's like, no, Rimuru, I'm going to be by you. I'm going to be your ally. And then when Rimuru shows that Yulon is still alive, Ramirez is like, oh, well, Clayman's the bad guy, huh? <laughs> that was funny. There is a lot of scenes of Ramirez in this episode, which I liked. And we saw Beretta the what was it golem yes it was a golem a golem that Rimmer made and got a demon inside of it we saw beretta and beretta is a girl i should have known better i for some reason i assumed it was a guy like it looked very masculine and when i heard a voice i was like that's a very feminine voice and then they were calling beretta a she and i was like oh it's a she. I should have known better because Etta. That's usually a feminine version of names. Like I said before, this episode showed a lot of Ramirez and then it explained more about Walpurgis and Clayman's plans. Now, Walpurgis, the meeting, is actually going to happen in three days. So I'm not too sure what's going to happen in three days. Are we going to go to the Walpurgis right away? Because Clayman is actually planning to attack Urizania in the Animal Kingdom in two days. So in this episode, after the meeting, making the alliance and such, they had like a little after party with everyone, relaxing in the hot springs, eating good food, drinking, and they have like a meeting. And Stoway gives his intel about Clayman. They gather some people and the thing they pointed out was that's really small for us and they concluded that they're going to Urizania 
I really hope I'm saying this right. If I'm not, please let me know. In the animal kingdom, to kill off the people there, the rest of the survivors after Melim's attack, and gather those souls so Clamon can be a true demon lord. He's a demon lord, but he's not a true demon lord. We have to add that true part. <laughs> So we have that, and uh, they're talking about the five fingers and Mulan. She was the ring finger and the one that's uh, in charge of the thirty thousand army that's going to Urizania is the middle finger. And I thought that was so funny. It's like, oh yeah, he's out there to give you the middle finger. <laughs> yeah, Clayman is like giving everyone the middle finger, mm -hmm. and he's like the most powerful of the fingers so i found that interesting that the most powerful one is the middle finger that was funny besides that milan says she was the ring finger so she knows all about the fingers and there's four of them now so i'm thinking okay is the rest of season two going to be about fighting off the rest of the fingers are we going to have one episode for the middle finger another episode for like the thumb the index and the pinky not too sure if you guys have any theories or you guys know what's going to happen let me know in the comments below then we have the part about walpurgis so claimant is planning to attack Urizania in two days walpurgis is in three days so there's a lot going to happen in those three days and then rimuru wants to attack claimant's area so <laughs> i don't know why i put up my fourth finger it should be just three things claimant's invasion Urizania. Wolpurgis and invading or taking over Clayman's area and defeating him and such. All of this is happening and I totally forgot about the other demon lords even though in the previous episodes I'm like I want to see the other demon lords. Totally forgot about them. This episode had a lot of information in it. It's such a good episode. I've been watching some other anime and I feel like they're short. They're not giving enough information but this one was just jam packed with them. Plus, there's a lot of humor in it, and we saw a lot of scenes with Veldor reading manga. He was looking good reading that manga. And then now, we have Ramirez who likes to read manga, and she was with the other dryads. They were totally giving her phenomenal service to the point where she wants to stay in Tempest. And so, she's like, I'm gonna stay there, I'm gonna make a labyrinth entrance or a labyrinth connection. I can go in and out and uh, Rima's was like no oh. <laughs> but you know she's totally going to stay there with the other drives like she is having a really good time there's a lot of humor with her and like I said before she had a lot of scenes it was really good because the other times we just saw like bits of her and the first time we saw her we were focusing on the kids and we just see more of her personality she has so many facial expressions in this episode and when she starts reading manga alongside of Eldora I'm thinking this is really interesting how two of the most powerful people in this group in this area in Tempest I think those two are like one of the most powerful are just chilling reading manga there's a lot to analyze there just from those scenes i mean oh speaking of scenes there's so many good scenes so many good picture scenes i loved it there are also funny parts in this episode too with xion and diablo xion was reporting on her interrogation interrogation we did that because it wasn't really it was more like tormenting they showed like a little picture of what they look like it looks bad really bad and she was so funny with her reports because she was saying their names wrong so there is king and maris archbishop Raheim and resin and she was saying their names wrong she was reading it off of a notebook and i don't know if she wrote it and she has bad handwriting or someone else wrote it and she can't really read that well or someone else wrote it and they had bad handwriting fortunately there is yom and mulan that were correcting <laughs> they knew the names they were there and it was so funny because when they were talking about xion interrogating they had like a look like 
No, it wasn't really interrogating. I don't know if I can call it interrogating. I don't know if I can call it questioning. Those were their responses. Oh, it was so funny. And then they got to resident and Xion called him ramen. I'm going to assume the proper pronunciation of that guy's name is Razen since she called him ramen. Adding to this funny scene, because Xion called him ramen, they asked Yabo, oh, how was he? Because Yabo is the one who apprehended him. And Yabo was saying, oh, he was really powerful. He is a powerful magic user. And then everybody was like, oh, a powerful magic user? Oh, that should have been Raza. And everybody knew who that was. They mentioned him. They added details. And for each one, she was like, what? Huh? Oh, and she's it's like clicking in her mind that she said the wrong name. And she's, she doesn't want to admit it. She does not. She's playing it cool. She's playing it dumb. And then Mulan's like, his name is Rosin. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, she on you. You messed up with his name. But that's okay, girl. We still love you. Now, if you remember, Rimuru does want to cause a civil war at Falmouth. And the Holy Western Church is also involved. So they're going to use those three people, King Enmaris, Archbishop Raheim, and Rosin return them back where they came from and then they're gonna start the civil war they're gonna like try and start it have the process and then end it Rimuru wants to send Diablo there and when we saw Diablo's reaction it was heartbreaking he was like so disappointed he was like what 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 and my thoughts were, oh, you don't want to be away from him. That's so cute. And then Rimuru is explained that this whole operation for a civil war and such to make Yom as king is going to take years. So it's like, oh, damn. Diablo is going to be away from Rimuru for years. But it's not like they can do fast travel, right? But anyways, I know why Diablo is going because... If Rosin is powerful, they need someone who could handle him. And it was Diablo. So Diablo, bro, you gotta go. You're the only one who can handle it. And in Diablo's distraught, she almost getting petty. She is like, <laughs> because when she had Rosin's name wrong, Diablo was like, <laughs> and I kind of like that dynamic. I like that little rivalry, that pettiness between them. Adding humor to this episode. This was a really good episode, sharing a lot of Ramaris, explaining more about Walpurgis, and telling us more about Clayman's plans, kind of giving us a hint of what other episodes are going to be like. If you've seen this episode and I missed anything and I didn't mention them, please let me know in the comments below. And if you haven't seen this episode, what's your impression of it? Let me know in the comments below. And if you want to talk outside of YouTube, there's a Discord. Link is in the description. I also stream on twitch.tv slash Superfina. People who watch these videos do like to stop by outside of YouTube and Twitch. I host podcasts across worlds where we talk about anime, manga, and other things we're interested in. If you like podcasts like that, link to the podcast is in the description. We're available on all platforms. Other than that, my name is Lehua, and this is the Superfina channel reviewing that time I got reincarnated as a slime season 2 episode 16. Hope you guys like this video and I'll see you on the next one. Laters! Huge thanks to my Patreons and channel members for making this video possible. If you also want to be part of the Superfina party, you can click over here or become a channel member. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss the next video. And I do stream live on Twitch every Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. Hope to see you guys there, and I will see you on the next video. This bump.